Hi everyone and welcome to this worship service hosted by First Baptist Church in Beverly, Massachusetts on this Pentecost Sunday. That Sunday when we celebrate that the Spirit of God that brought the heavens and the earth into being, that that same Spirit is breathing new life and new hope and healing into us as well. We're glad that you're here. We have folks this past Sunday who worshiped with us from right here in the North Shore, throughout Massachusetts and North Carolina and Florida, in Montana, in Seattle, and from Oregon. We also had a, a person who was worshiping with us from Nicaragua, from our partner ministry of Amos Health and Hope. And that's what it means to be the church today, a gathering of people virtually. When we can't be together for the time being in a building, we find that the church is bigger than we perhaps thought. And it is beautiful to sense God's spirit bringing us together to celebrate our common bond as people of faith. My name is Kent Harrop and I'm on the pastoral staff here at First Baptist and it is a privilege and joy to share in this time with you. And also sharing in this service is Jen Bobson who will be our vocalist this day and our music director Dr. Esther Chang. My ministry colleague, Reverend Julie Flowers, is on vacation and will be back in her virtual office on Tuesday, June 2nd. We're glad that we can all be here with you. And thanks to Pam Constantine and her family for editing the various pre-recorded components that are seam seamlessly put together in this worship service. Welcome to everybody. I also want to mention that if you would like to donate to support the ministry of this church, you can go to our website, fbcbeverly.org, and click on the Donate button, and we appreciate your support. We are truly all in this together. Now, to enter into this Pentecost Sunday, would you pray with me? And I invite you to place your hands in the shape of a bowl and within that bowl to place your prayers, your gratitude, your thanks, your joys, your hope, your struggle, your pain, your anxiousness, your fear, and to place it all within this prayer bowl and to trust that God, the creator of heaven and earth, is at work in your life and in mine and throughout the face of this globe. We'll conclude this prayer by offering the Lord's Prayer, and the phrase that we use are debts and debtors, but whatever phrase works for you, please feel free. So, on this Pentecost, let us pray together. God of grace and God of hope, we thank you for the ways in which you speak into our lives, for the ways in which you carry us when we feel so broken and fragile, for the ways in which you Sit with us at night when we awaken at three in the morning, worried and fretting over the future. Grace us with a deep sense of your blessing, a deep sense of your peace. We offer up all these prayers collectively in this prayer bowl to you. And our prayers go out beyond these walls to be with all who grieve the loss of loved ones, particularly at this time of COVID to be with our first line responders, doctors and nurses and EMTs, for those who work in nursing homes and rehab centers who are so tired and exhausted. Surround those good people with your peace and your love. Be with those who are on the front lines, making sure our shelves are stocked and we have groceries and packages delivered. Be with business owners as they begin to reopen slowly. Keep us all safe as we live into this new normal. Grace us with a sense of responsibility for one another and a deep sense of your presence in the midst of it all. Our prayers go out beyond the walls of this nation to embrace all of our neighbors of the world 
to be with refugees, to be with those on the front lines, to be with all who are in need. Grace our political leaders nationally, locally, internationally with wisdom and with compassion. We pray all this with a sense of expectation that your spirit, loving God, is in the midst of all of this. And we offer now the prayer which Jesus taught as together we pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And may God's people say, Amen. And may it be so. passage for Pentecost is found in Acts chapter 2, the Acts of the Disciples, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. The story of the coming of the Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. And all of them, all the disciples, were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native languages of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we each hear them speaking in our own languages? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking of God's deeds of power. 
And all of them were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. May God's blessing be upon this, the hearing, the heeding, and the embracing of this promise. Amen. Now it's time for step sitters, that time when our youngest uh, members, the kids and the young at heart gather around for a children's story. And so it's good to be here with you. So I got a question. What is it that gets you excited? What is it that you love to do? Or when was the last time you had a wonderful surprise that you said, wow, My grandmother describes those times as moments that make your ears wiggle when you get so happy and so excited. Let me give some examples of wow moments for me. And when we get back together, I wanna to hear about the wow moments for you. This winter, I was at Dane Street Beach and it was cold and gray, and I was down by the water skipping stones. And then the sun broke through the clouds, and there was this amazing rainbow, technicolor, vivid colors, that stretched across the water. And I said, wow. And I said, woo-hoo. And once I was on a fishing boat with a friend off of Gloucester and we saw this big whale come out of the water and then go back in. And we could just see its tip of its tail as it came out of the water and then went back in. And I said, wow. And woo, who? I remember the first time I learned how to ride a bicycle. I was about, I don't know, six or seven years of age. And my dad running alongside me while I was holding on to the handlebars. And he's running by with me and then he let go and he said, just keep pedaling, Kent. And I pedaled and I pedaled and I pedaled and I was so happy. Remember the first time you rode your bike? And if you haven't learned how to ride a bike, so someday you will, and you will have a big, big smile. Those wow moments make life so special. That's the good stuff in life, right? Well, I want to share another wow moment. I'm going to reach over my shoulder. And I have this plant. This is called an orchid. And look at the beautiful flowers. Look at how intricate the design is. That's what God made. Well, for a long time, they weren't flowers. For a couple of years, all there was was this plant with these leaves that aren't particularly pretty. And there was an empty stalk, but there were no flowers. But Trisha kept on kind of cultivating that plant, nurturing the soil of that plant. And then, some months ago, one by one, these beautiful flowers came out. And I said, wow, fantastic. My ears were wiggling. Pentecost is a day that celebrates that the Spirit of God that brought all the wonderful things into being came into the world. Pentecost speaks of God's Spirit, the source of hope and love and joy coming into the world. And that's what we're celebrating today. God's Spirit at work and a time to notice the beauty that is all around us. 
to say, thank you, God. To say, wow. Would you pray with me, please? Repeat after me. Thank you, God, for all the beauty in our world that you have created. We thank you, loving God, for making each one of us special and unique, one of a kind. We thank you, God, for rainbows, for whales, for riding our bikes and for playing with family and friends. Thank you, God, for always being with us and for the gift of your spirit of love. Amen. And woohoo. Be well, my friends, and look forward to seeing you again virtually on the computer screen. And someday, it will happen. Someday we'll be back together again and give each other a high five and a big woohoo. In the meantime, be well, friends. Be well. in Acts chapter 2 begins with these evocative words. When the day of Pentecost had come and they were all together in one place, all the disciples in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested upon each one of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Wow, there is a lot to unpack in this passage. How do you describe that which is undescribable? How do you describe an experience or a feeling in the Bible, the writers in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, from the time when the Bible was put together in an oral fashion to the time when it was put down on, on, with ink and on paper, they used metaphors, they used images, they used symbols to try to get at the heart of that which was seemingly impossible to put into words. You ever go on a vacation and you try to describe the place you visited and 
what you felt while you were in the midst of this fabulous location? Or do you ever have a friend who invites you to come over to their house to watch slides of their trip? Or to scroll through their phone and see a seemingly endless uh, list of photos and images from their vacation? Our eyes gla glaze over, don't they? Telling about something secondhand can't fully capture the experience of those of us who have those wow moments. And in the book of Acts, the writer of Acts, which is attributed to Luke, is trying to describe what people felt, what people experienced. And that was true in the Old Testament as well, in the book of Genesis. In chapter 1, verse 1, the writer of Genesis is trying to describe what it was like when the cosmos came into being. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and chaos, which in Hebrew is the wonderful phrase tohu vabohu, tohu vabohu, chaos covered the face of the deep. And while a wind from the crater swept across the face of the waters. This wonderfully rich and evocative use of poetry and imagery to describe that which is undescribable, how the heavens and the earth came into being. But theologically, there is a profound point being made that in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of the emptiness, in the midst of the uncertainty, in the midst of tohu vabohu chaos, God was at work bringing order out of disorder, life out of emptiness. Do we believe this to be true? In the New Testament passage for today, the Spirit enters into the chaos that the early disciples were experiencing, the uncertainty that was theirs. The followers of Jesus were in disarray, in the prior chapter, in Acts chapter 1, we have the ascension story where Jesus leaves them for the final time on earth. The resurrection stories, the appearance stories are no longer. Their security blanket, their spiritual security blanket of Jesus being with them has left the building. They are all alone. No more words of instruction. No word words of encouragement, no more wisdom to guide their path. They are seemingly alone. Uncertainty and chaos seems to reign. Ever felt like you were in the midst of chaos? What a silly question. That is our, our reality right now, isn't it? We're living in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of profound uncertainty in the chaos that it brings. It is an understatement to say that ours is a chaotic moment. Our national government response to the pandemic is at best inconsistent. Many of us are dealing with employment issues, have lost our jobs or are at risk of losing our jobs and all the worries financially and emotionally that that brings. This week, 100,000 of our fellow citizens lost their lives to COVID-19. And around the world, there are hundreds of thousands of more people who have lost their lives. And the ripple effect goes out, all the family and all the friends who grieve their passing, and my guess is that each one of us have been touched directly or indirectly by the passing of family and friends. It is a time of tohu vabohu. It is a time of profound sense of chaos. Our state, yes, is beginning to open up and to place safeguards, and we are hopeful for that. Yet we know that we will not be out of the woods fully until a vaccine is found. 
As a church family, we're experimenting with new ways of being in relationship. We long to be back together physically in one place, but we know it is not yet safe. And so we experiment with ways to be in meaningful relationship with one another. We are all out of our comfort zone. Parents and teachers and students. We know that this is a stretch for us all. This week, when we thought uncertainty could be no greater, the ugly and persistent sin of racism reared its ugly head. The killing of George Floyd, a handcuffed black man in Minneapolis by a white police officer in broad daylight, captured on video while a crowd of onlookers pleaded for mercy. And we ask ourselves, when will we as individuals and as a nation be freed from this sin of racism? When will, will we see an end of the systematic and systemic causes of racism and the racism that is seemingly rooted in the human heart? When will we be freed of it all? When will the chaos pass away? When will we find the freedom that comes in reason and in order. The ancient phrase tohu va bohu, chaos, seems so apt for our time. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 2, we, we are told that chaos, emptiness, and darkness provides the essential environment for the spirit to be at work. What a paradox that out of the chaos, it creates the setting for which God to enter and to bring about creation, to bring about life, to bring about hope and reason and order. And as people of faith today, we are called and challenged to believe that that same creative force that brought the cosmos, the heavens and the earth, and you and me into being is also entering into the challenges of our time. In our New Testament passage, in Acts chapter 2, God's Spirit, which in the Greek is the word pneuma, entered into the despair of the followers of Jesus and transformed them. This group of locked away disciples who were afraid that they too would be arrested, that they too would be crucified by the Roman Empire, were filled with the Spirit, and they moved from their locked away room and they went out into the streets to share the good news that God's love and forgiveness had come in the witness and testimony of Jesus. And that this gift of love and forgiveness and healing and hope was available for all of humankind. And in a world full of division then, between ethnicities and races and languages, those dividing walls came crashing down, we're, we're told, in the story of Acts. And people were able to hear this good news of God's infinite love and grace being spoken in a language that they could hear, that they knew to be true. Imagine this disorganized, discouraged, disoriented group of people moving from their locked away fear and being a source of healing and hope. The story in Genesis and the story in Acts share a common point, a common message. That when we feel most overwhelmed, when tohu va bohu chaos seems to reign, that is the time, paradoxically, when God is most at work. And we are invited to claim that promise, claim that truth, and to believe that God is at work even now when we don't see perhaps signs like we would like. So, where do we sense God's stirring? I gotta be honest, in writing this sermon, I had to stretch. And the best I can see right now in the midst of the disorientation of our time are glimpses, glimpses of hope, 
glimpses of the promise that God is at work under the ground, in the shadows, in the midst of the turbulence, that God is at work. I am catching glimpses of that, and I hope you are too. So let me offer some glimpses that I am seeing and sensing and invite you to look for and claim those glimpses of hope and blessing in your life. So I had a knock on my door not too long ago, and I went out onto my porch, and there on the sidewalk a few steps down were our neighborhood children, Sebastian and Isla age six and age four. And they had placed on my steps flowers from their garden. Daffodils still in bloom, some tulips in a mason jar full of water. And on our sidewalk with chalk, they had created a big heart filled with, ro with rainbows and with flowers. And they had written with some help from their mom, we love our neighbors. A glimpse of the spirit, a glimpse of hope. This past week I was kayaking on the Ipswich River and I put in at Topsfield by the Topsfield Fair and I floated down towards the Audubon Reservation. And I stopped at an island that is run by the Audubon, and it was empty. There was no one there. It's called Prescott Island. In fact, I didn't see another soul while, while I was on that river for about three hours and about six miles. And so I stopped to have my lunch at Prescott Island, and I began to hear this wild call over and over again, seemingly over my shoulder, so close. And I looked up and I saw a pileated woodpecker, which is a great, great name for a woodpecker, a pileated woodpecker. Have you ever seen one? I'd only seen one once before on the West Coast, and here was my first in Massachusetts. The pileated woodpecker is the largest of woodpeckers. It is 19 inches tall, and it is beautiful with a crown of red on its head and with this wild, exuberant call. And it was only about 20 feet above my head while I was eating my sandwich, and it ate while I ate. And I wondered whether the spirit sounds like that pileated woodpecker, wild and untamable and unpredictable and breaking into the most unlikely of moments, unsuspecting of moments like that woodpecker while I ate my lunch, sharing in a moment. How does the spirit break into your life and into my life? Surely it is not what we expect, but always to bring about a blessing. How do we see the spirit at work? My friend Ray Skellinger is an American Baptist missionary who works with refugees around the world. And for the past several months, he has been journeying with refugees walking from Honduras and Guatemala and El Salvador. And he meets them on the road and he has walked with them to Mexico. And for the past months, from time to time, for weeks on end, he has been living with the refugees, sharing in their vulnerability. These refugees seeking political asylum, legal asylum in the United States fleeing gang violence in their countries, and they've been denied. Their court appearances have been put off again and again, now stretching into many months. So they live, these refugees who have fled so much, they, they live in these encampments on the border of Mexico. And my friend Ray is living with them. And this seemingly futile effort has also great power because Ray says, I want to listen to their stories and I want to see, to let these people who are seemingly invisible to everyone else, particularly invisible to people in power, invisible to most of us in, in the United States, to be able to, I want 
those people to know that they are heard, that I know their names, that I listen to their stories, that I value them. Could it be that Ray is a breath of the Spirit, that Ray in his own futile, seemingly little way is bringing about that which is not futile, that is life-giving? Could it be that God is working through Ray? That God is in the midst of our neighbors who are most vulnerable on the Mexican-U.S. border? How does the Spirit work in our midst? I see the Spirit at work in the 20 or more households of our church who receive every week a phone call or a card from members of our church lay visitation ministry team. The most vulnerable among us, households of people who are dealing with chronic health issues or are feeling particularly isolated, receive a call or a card to say, we see you, we know you, we cherish you, you belong to us and we belong to you. That is the work, my friends, of the Spirit. It isn't easy during this challenging time, but we are invited to look for glimpses and signs, subtle and sometimes dramatic, of the Spirit breaking into our fear and reminding us that we are loved, that we are known, and that we are cherished. This day is Pentecost, the beginning of a new season in the life of the church to look for ways in which that great mystery we call spirit, that source that brought healing and hope into the world and the creating of the cosmos and brought hope into the disorder and disarray of the early disciples, that that same spirit is at work in your life and in mine. So I invite you to join with me in opening our hearts, minds, and imaginations to the ways in which God speaks. God was at work before this pandemic. God is at work in the midst of this pandemic. And when this pandemic recedes into the history books, we will look back and know that God is always faithful, simply waiting to be found. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. Open your heart, your mind, and imagination to the glimpses of the Spirit at work. Be well, my friends, and be hopeful. And may God's people say, Amen.
And now may the God of grace, the God of peace, the God of hope, the source of all blessings be with us, carry us, accompany us, and may the Spirit fill us with hope. May we be a blessing to others. Be well, my friends. Be hopeful. Be kind. Amen.